In today's video, Black Templar Tactical Marines battle a renegade commissar and his army of chaos cultists as we play our second on-screen game of Warhammer 40,000 Kill Team. Well hi folks, this is Lee from skirmishwargames.com and welcome to our second on-screen game of Warhammer 40,000 Kill Team. In our first game from a couple of weeks ago, we pitted uh, Orc Burner Boys against Talarn Bandit Militia. In today's scenario, we're going to have a squad of Black Templar Tactical Marines trying to assassinate a renegade commissar who surrounded himself with a, a cadre of Chaos Cultists. And I'm sure some of you uh, Chaos players are looking at all these cultists and saying, don't you know that's going to get you in real serious trouble in the morale phase? And yeah, in our practice game, it certainly did. Uh, the casualties, once they started to mount, we found that the cultists... Uh, couldn't make any of their uh, shaken checks, that they were basically just all like, paralyzed from being shaken because there were so many casualties, they couldn't make a successful roll other than uh, getting a natural one. So to uh, rectify that, as is our habit, we're going to uh, modify the rules to suit our own nefarious purposes. So we're going to steal some realm rules from uh, some other games we've been playing and apply those uh, to this game, a kill team. So uh, the cultists will probably hang in there to the very end, but the ones who get wounded, who get flesh wounds, will still have to make a morale check against their leadership, um, and they will get a negative modifier if they're wounded, and a positive modifier if they have a buddy within two inches, or if they can see the leader, if he's within six inches and in line of sight, then they'll get to basically uh, use his leadership stat. So that's the way we're doing it. We're not gonna let uh, the official rules get in the way of us uh, playing the scenario we wanna play. So anyway, let me run down today's forces, and we'll explain the scenario, and we'll get right to it. So I'm going to be playing a horde of chaos cultists, and in today's scenario, um, basically we have a renegade commissar. We're going to call him uh, Meister Jaeger, and uh, I know that they have a chaos commissar, I think, in the uh, one of the expansion rules, but he's not that. He's basically a brand new imperial commissar, basically doesn't really revere the emperor. He reveres his own ego. So when he discovered he was going to get sent to the front lines out there by uh, Tyranid High Fleet Leviathan, he decided, nope, I think I'm going to give uh, Chaos a try. So he's basically been hanging out with cultists down here in the conduits below the city. This is kind of a ancient maintenance area and storage facility way down below the city streets. And um, the uh, Templars must have gotten wind of it. The Inquisition must have gotten wind of what he was doing because uh, they've been scouring the city looking for him. And they've been sending troops down to uh, look into the maze below the city. So today's scenario is basically going to be this enclave of chaos cultists and their renegade commissar are down below the city streets and they're actually trying to get out of the city. They want to get into the tunnels, uh, find some transport and then get off planet. And um, if they do, this guy's got the ego and the ruthlessness to become uh, pretty high in the chaos ranks and the chaos hierarchy after a few thousand years. So um, it's really important that the Imperial forces stop him before he gets out there. Plus think of the propaganda scandal that it would be. So to try to stop this huge horde of cultists, Lynn is going to be uh, playing a simple boilerplate tactical uh, Black Templar squad. So we have a sergeant with a chainsword and a bolt pistol. We have uh, three tactical marines with bolt guns. And then there's uh, one uh, gunner who has some um, heavy bolter. And they all have frag grenades and crack grenades. So these guys were part of the teams that were sent down into the sewers, down into the conduits, down into the maintenance shafts to try to uh, find this commissar that's gone missing that they suspect has turned to chaos. And uh, this uh, was the team that uh, got the luck of the draw and they found the hidden base below ground. So somehow these guys are gonna have to survive the onslaught of cultists, try to take out that uh, renegade commissar and survive to tell the tale. And at the very least, one of these guys, if they get completely destroyed, has to try to stagger off the board. To, he won't wanna leave his battle brothers, but it's more important to let the Imperium know what's going on below decks here, so. Oh yeah, and let's quickly go over what the cultists have. So this is a regular uh, base level um, Imperial Commissar who's uh, got some aspirations to join Chaos and become more of a uh, renegade Commissar, but he's just starting out. So he's been hanging out with these lowly cultists, and so he still has his uh, regular Commissar gear. He has a, a plasma pistol and a power sword, and other than that, he's a regular um, Imperial Commissar. Then he's supported by, this is the cultist champion, and he has a shotgun. And most of the other cultists have either an auto gun or a uh, auto pistol and a, a brutal assault weapon. 
Well, this guy's just got a shotgun, so his sword there is just a regular uh, combat weapon. Uh, he normally gets two attacks, and then all of the regular cultists that have a brutal assault weapon, uh, they get one attack normally, and then another attack for their assault weapon. And then the guys who have auto guns just have auto guns. This guy here is a flamer. That's a, a cultist gunner, so he's got a flamethrower. And this guy here is another cultist gunner, and he has a heavy stubber. So that's the cultist team. There's an even dozen of them. And of course, uh, if we were strictly adhering to the uh, kill team rules as published, then once we started getting three, four, five casualties, then it would become pretty impossible uh, or very difficult to start making uh, morale checks to avoid being shaken. So we're going to do it a little differently, and we're just going to steal some uh, rules from some other games we've played that seem to work pretty well and apply that to this so that we can play our scenario that has a dozen cultists because otherwise um, really couldn't be done. So I don't particularly know why they do that. Maybe they want to uh, keep the squad small in kill team and that's fine, but we're going to do it our way because this is the game we want to play. So I hope you enjoy it regardless. Another change we're making involves climbing uh, in the kill team rules. I believe that someone can climb a wall as fast as they can run across the ground. And um, that made some of our terrain sort of irrelevant because people could just bound right over it essentially. So we're changing that so that uh, if you're climbing up, it's um, half movement. Then of course, if you're running across, it's normal movement. And if you're descending, we're gonna say that's normal movement because you're making sort of a gravity assisted decline. So that's the way we're doing it and we'll see how that works. And that'll slow people down a little bit when they're hitting some of these walls rather than having them jump over them like gazelles. So if you watched our first game of Kill Team where we had uh, Imperial Guard Talarn versus uh, some Orc Burna Boys, we kept that one pretty simple. But in this game, we are going to add command points, so we'll each get a command point every round, and then uh, we'll be able to spend that on certain tactics. And because the Black Templars are all Black Templars, they're also going to get the special ability Righteous Zeal, which will allow them to reroll charge rolls. So now these uh, Black Templars, regular tactical marine Black Templars, not Primaris or anything, have gone down into the tunnels, and they're going to have to deal with a cultist infestation and uh, see if they can come out the other side alive. So, Lynn, you played a practice game yesterday with these guys, and they're pretty tough, right? Especially when you use tactics to re-roll some of the armor saves. Pretty impervious, not impervious, but pretty resistant to the auto guns and things. Which helps with the fact that we're outnumbered 5 to 12. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, you are outnumbered more than 2 to 1, but that's what makes it heroic. It yes. wouldn't be challenging otherwise. So that is our scenario today, basically a large mob of chaos cultists and a renegade commissar versus uh, some righteous black Templars. So we're going to start by rolling for setup. We're not going to make you watch the whole setup uh, second by second, but we'll roll. The high roll picks a side, and then the uh, low roll has to set up on the other side first. And because there's twice as many cultists as there are uh, Templars, we're going to set up two for one. So I'm going to set up two cultists for every one Templar that'll prevent a big mob of cultists being added at the end and me loading up one side of the zone once I see where the Templars are all landed. So that's another modification we're making. I got a two, you got a two. This is our new dice tray that we made the other day. Six. So I'm gonna pick um, this side over here and you can set up one of you guys over here. Okay, the troops are all placed. So, Lynn, it looks like you have a couple of regular tactical Marines there with bolt guns. You have the Marine Sergeant here. You have the Heavy Bolter and another regular Marine right here. This cultist here has an auto gun. The flamethrower guy is down there. There's one with a brutal assault weapon and an auto pistol. Auto gun, um, brutal assault, heavy stubber, brutal assault. That is the uh, champion with the shotgun. And then the commissar. Is down here around the corner and then there's a couple of guys with uh, auto pistols and brutal assault weapons over there so they're just going to try to move forward get through the this uh, corrupted area of the maintenance and uh, storage tunnels and uh, get the uh, commissar to the maze so that he can escape outside the city perhaps get off world and start rising in the hierarchy of the chaos gods will the righteous zeal of the templars put a stop to him we will see and I should mention that uh, 
So this terrain, most of the terrain, like this is low terrain here, it does provide cover, uh, but just pretty much they can move over it at will. These pylons here actually hold up the ceiling, so you can't climb on those. Most of these other things you can climb on. Um, this uh, dice tray is supposed to represent some sort of a big garbage chute that runs from the surface all the way down to the planet's uh, core. Um, so who knows what's eating the garbage? Best not to think about it. Maybe this is why the uh, Chaos people like this particular area. But this is pretty much a solid pillar, so you can't climb on it, and it uh, pretty much obscures all visibility, so you can't shoot through it or anything like that. So Lynn, are you ready to unleash your righteous zeal on this enclave of cultists? who are just expressing their uh, religious freedom down here in the steam tunnels. We've come to clean out the rat's nest. <laughs> That's right. A righteous purge. So let's roll for some initiative. Get this show on the road. I got a three and you've got a ten. Our plan here is to have a four-turn game, assuming that all these cultists don't make the uh, game time run too long. And uh, so this is turn one, the movement phase, and Lynn, you start by moving all your troops. I'm going to ready the one with the heavy bolter and also the tactical marine standing next to him. Tactical marines, ready for anything? I'm going to ready my tactical sergeant with the chain sword and the bolt pistol. And frag and crack grenades. And frag and crack grenades. And then these two regular guys are just going to move. Okay. Marines are on the move. Taking some cover behind the city's main garbage chute. Okay, now it's time for the cultist horde to uh, do what they do best, which is, I don't know, go screaming into the enemy. Caution is for the weak. Here's a pair of cultists with pistols and brutal assault weapons. Here's the cultist champion with a shotgun. Unless I'm mistaken, there is no um, midterm fire or anything in this game where you would ready yourself and when someone's running across your field of view, take a shot at them. Only if they're charging. Only if they're charging. So that's kind of weird because sometimes you have somebody and they'll cross the whole battlefield and uh, no one can take a pot shot at them. So I think that's a little strange unless I'm misinterpreting the rules, but I didn't see anything like that in there. I've been reminded I need to mark my guys who move, so I'll do that. This guy's going to ready himself. This guy's going to move down. Up. So a big pile of cultists down here by the uh, garbage chute. Perhaps the renegade commissar will join them. These guys will just ready themselves. Okay, I think that's everybody. So, a couple of readied guys, that's probably pointless. Readied, these guys all moved. Those guys over there moved. So now time for some shooting, right? Mm -hmm. What is your first uh, shot in the shooting phase? You're gonna try to shoot this bolter through the pylon, through the hole in the pylon, to this cultist who's up here on top of the uh, structure. So this uh, regular tactical marine with the bolt yeah. rifle can see him. This guy here is kind of behind the pylon, and when I kind of look line of sight behind the cultist, I can't really see him. I can see just the end of the heavy bolter there, but I can't see his body at all, so. Okay, I what's, would say no. what's the range on the regular bolt gun? So not quite within rapid fire range, it's about 15. Okay, so four plus to hit. Six. Six, so you hit. Four plus to hit because it was long range. The bolter strength is four, his toughness is three, so it should hit on a, should wound on a three plus, yeah. No. And you don't. You do have a command point though this round, you could reroll that. Nope. So this cultist with the outer gun is gonna return fire, he's gonna shoot back the way the marine was shooting, but the marine gets cover because he's kind of down there behind the pylon, so. Uh, normally a four plus, five plus for long range, and so he needs a six because of cover. And he doesn't do it, so he missed. And I don't think my heavy bolter can see anyone. No, I don't. I don't think he can. So the little sergeant back here with the he bolt pistol. He can't hit anyone. Can't so both of those can't do anything. You have two readies that can't do anything, so those can be done. Okay. My regular tactical marine might be able to see one of your guys. Yeah, I think there's some cover involved. Let's check that out. Let's check. Yep, we can see him peeking around the corner, launching uh, bolter rounds at these poor little cultists. So this tactical marine is shooting that uh, chaos cultist there, long range with some cover. So that would be a five plus, I believe. Two, missed. 
You can use your command point to re-roll that. Nope. Okay. So the Marine shot at this guy here, but missed. Your turn. Did you want to return fire? I think he's just got a pistol, right? Yeah, he's Out just of your range. he's just outside the range. I don't think he can quite do it. And no combat. No close combat, or the fight phase as they call it. And so I guess that is that. So that is turn one. So this is a four-turn game. I don't know how much will actually get accomplished, but uh, maybe as people close in. So I guess we roll for some initiative. Eleven. Okay, my initiative. This guy here is going to ready himself. These are regular Chaos Cultists with uh, auto pistols and brutal assault weapons, and they're both going to move. Move, move, move. So they're just hoofing out. They're just going to try to close the distance. We've got a bunch of cultists over here, and I suppose they should do something. The um, cultist champion is actually going to advance. <laughs> One. So he gets to move seven. And he has a shotgun, so he can fire in advance. Okay. So here's another regular cultist with an auto gun this time, so no brutal assault weapon. So he's moving up. Here's another cultist with a uh, regular auto gun. He's moving up. The commissar, the traitorous commissar, is going to move up there. So he has a uh, acute uh, sense of self-preservation and a huge ego. So uh, he decided that chaos was probably a better route to... Uh, power and glory than uh, fighting the Tyranids and becoming biomass for the brood. And on this side, I think the heavy stubber will just kind of go around the corner a little bit so he can shoot and maintain some cover. This here is a regular cultist with an auto gun and an assault weapon, brutal assault weapon. He's going to move here, about another three. And so is this guy, same thing. He is a regular cultist with an auto pistol and some kind of a spiked ball on a chain. And he's going to run that forward. Flamer is going to move over here. This is another cultist with an auto pistol and a brutal assault weapon. And he's going to go this way. So they are screaming toward the enemy, letting out a chaotic war cry. Okay, so I think that's all my movement, right? Okay, so now it's the Templar's turn to move, and I understand that you have a charge on your mind. Yep, my tactical marine over here is going to charge your champion because he can't see him, so you don't get to overwatch. So you got a 10, so the marine moves in. Marine moves in with a fierce charge. That's right. He doesn't like the shotgun at range, so we're going right. to take it into close combat. Okay, so he wants to avoid... Getting shot with a shotgun. Okay. Correct. Okay. Now you have another tactical marine right there. Yeah. This tactical marine is going to move over here. Okay. So he's doing some community outreach to a couple of youths who may have lost their way, huh? Yes. Okay. Tactical sergeant is just going to... Chain sword and bolt pistol at the ready. Well, moving up. Behind the big garbage shaft. Yep. And here on the other side, you have another tactical marine and the heavy bolter. Tactical marine is going to ready himself. Okay. And the heavy bolter is going to move. So he may want to move into a firing position to start spraying heavy bolter rounds at all those screaming cultists. Yep. So here's the heavy bolter, and I'm sure he's just salivating to start unloading explosive bolts at those uh, cultists, but because it's a heavy weapon and he moved, it'll be a minus one when he shoots. But you do have a couple of command points, so you can always reroll if you need to. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's all your movement? That is all my movement. Okay. So readied shoot first. All right, I have one readied unit, that is the cultist up here with the uh, auto rifle. Actually, now he has a new target, that's this guy with the heavy bolter here. So he would get cover. Let's see what the range is. And I'm going to say that's within uh, rapid fire range. That's within 12. 
So he can rattle off a couple of shots at that uh, Marine with the heavy bolter. So two shots, short range with cover, so five plus with his auto gun. One hit, strength three versus your uh, toughness of four, so five plus to wound. I wounded, so you get a three up save. And you didn't do it. You're going to spend a command point. And you saved. Okay. That's a good use for your command point there. Yes, it is. Can you imagine the shame and indignity if your heavy weapon was taken out by a little occultist with an auto gun? No comment. No comment. So he shot. Yep. Now you have a ready guy somewhere, don't you? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So your ready guy is this tactical marine here who and he's got uh, a bolt gun. He's got a bolt gun and he saw the uh, he saw an auto gun bullet bounce off the shell of the uh, heavy bolter guy. So Oh, he's going to start spraying bullets into uh, Well, I want to go short range. <laughs> that's right. Okay. Make use of that rapid fire. So, him maybe shooting these cultists over here that are yeah. screaming towards you with uh, lead pipes and crowbars and all manner of bludgeons. Yeah. I think he's the one that's in clear view. Okay. So two shots, three plus to hit, two hits, two hits, three plus to wound, one wound. One wound, six up save, no. Do you want to use a command point? No, I'm not going to use a command point on that guy. He's, he's doing what he wants. He's living his best life. One, two, three to wound, and four, five, six to die. Flesh wound. Flesh wound. Under the new revised uh, house rules, then when the morale phase comes, he'll have to... Um, roll for shaken. Roll, see if he's shaken. Okay. Okay, so he shot. He shot. So I have a couple of cultists here who have auto pistols and uh, brutal assault weapons. And I'm going to shoot one, because I can only shoot one at a time, as I was reminded. I want to unload both of them, but nope, just get to take my turn. So that is uh, within six inches, so it's short range. So one shot... Strength three, four plus to hit, missed. The Templar is gonna return fire with his bolt gun. And that's definitely short range. All right. So a couple of bolt arounds. Couple of bolt three arounds. Three plus. Three plus. Two, Two hits. hits. Three up to wound. Two wounds. Two wounds. Six up save. No save. Roll to see if he's uh, flesh wounded or... Flesh wounded. Okay. Okay. So who do you want to shoot with now? He's going to return fire. Okay. Now he's got a flesh wound though. So he's going to return fire. He's got a flesh wound. So instead of um, four up, it's a five up. Nope. He was taking deadly aim, but then he caught a bolt around in the gut. And it slowed him down a bit. It did. Okay. Or at least affected his aim. Now one of your Marines gets to shoot. Okay, so you got the sergeant with the bolt pistol, and he's looking for a target. So my tactical sergeant is shooting at your regular cultist here. Got him. Three up to wound. He wounded. Six up save. Nope. Big number, big number. Out of commission. Out of commission. So that cultist with the auto gun is gone. Before he got to shoot, that's my Before favorite. Before he got to shoot. That's the best. So sad. Okay, it's my turn to shoot again, so I'm going to have this other cultist with an auto gun try to avenge his fallen comrade, and so he's going to take a shot at the Space Marine Sergeant. So it's an auto gun, it's 24 inch range, okay. rapid fire, not at long range, but the sergeant does get cover, so. Um, Five plus to hit. Snake eyes. Snake eyes, it was meant to be. Okay, so next up you got your... Uh, heavy bolter. Tactical marine gunner with the heavy bolter, and he's just itching for a target, huh? We're going to go for the one that's out in plain view. All right. He's going to, since he moved, it would have been one more, so it's easier to go for the one that's right. in clear view. Okay. So he does get three shots. Three shots, minus one because he moves, so instead of a three up, it's a four up. Right. One hit. One hit. Strength five. So it's still uh, three plus to wound. Ooh. No, you could re-roll that with a command point. No. No. 
I, you know, well, okay. You've got a lot of shots left. I'd rather save it in case you hit. <laughs> okay. Well, that's a good point. So I had suggested that maybe she use a command point to reroll that wound hit, but she's worried that a stray auto gun bullet might take down a Marine, and so an armor save might be necessary, and I can't fault the wisdom of that. So I almost forgot about the heavy stubber over here. And now that the um, Marine gunner has moved, he can get a shot at him. So he's not at long range. Heavy three, so he gets three shots, but it's gonna be five up to hit. So he's gonna unload a burst of uh, auto gun bullets. Um, two hits. All right, let's make something happen. Strength on the heavy stubber is strength four. So four up to wound, one wound, three up save, you got Saved. it. Okay. Oh, that marine armor. Mm-hmm. Okay, so he fired. Who else you got? I have no one. No one else, because you ran out of guys? No, because I've got the charge as my other one. Oh, okay. So this pistol arrow here, the cultist with the auto pistol and the uh, club, basically, Gonna take a shot. Normally four plus, now it's a five plus, one shot. Six. It's a pistol, so that would have been long range, but a six still hits. Yep. Natural six. Mm -hmm. So let's see, strength of three versus your toughness of four, five up to wound. Wound. Now the gunner gets a three up armor save. Oh, the possibilities. Okay. Command point. Command point. Come on, baby. It's oh. a good thing I saved that command point, isn't it? <laughs> Oh, that would have been something. Had he taken that Marine out, he might have gotten favor from the Chaos Gods. We don't know. So two pistol guys here who can uh, shoot at the Marine here. The tactical Marine that's hiding behind the Ark of Triumph. So that's long range with cover. So a six or better. And no. Okay, so they shot, and I think that's everybody. So we only have one charge, one close combat right now, and that is this tactical marine versus the cultist champion, correct? Correct. Okay. So you charged, so you have Hammer of Wrath. Oh. That's just what they call having, in this game, having charged, and so you get to... Uh, take the first stab. Take the first, right. So three plus to hit. Hit. Three plus to wound. No. So Egon, the cult champion, is going to strike back. He gets two attacks, but he does not have a brutal assault weapon. He just naturally gets two attacks because he's the champion. Weapon skill, four plus. One. Strength of three versus your toughness of four, so five up to wound. Wound. So you get a three up save. And he saved. Are you breathing a sigh of relief that you didn't get chopped down yes. by a rusty sword? Yes. So under my house rules that I kind of stole from a couple other games that we've been playing, this guy has a leadership of five, I believe. And he's got one wound, so that means he has to get um, four or less uh, on two dice. And he doesn't, so he's shaken. And then there's another guy way over on your side. This guy is just a regular cultist, a leadership of five. One wound, not quite within six inches of the traitor commissar, so he almost feels inspired, but not quite, so he needs to get four better. He does not, so he is shaken. Shake, shake, shake. Okay. And um, that's everybody. Turn three, roll for some initiative. Ooh, not looking good. Four. Five. Five. All right, you are up. Okay, so you uh, get to move all your guys. I'm going to ready my regular tactical marine and my tactical gunner. Okay. Want to make sure you get your shots. I want to make sure I get my shots. So over here you have a tactical marine facing off against these two uh, pistol packing cultists with their brutal assault weapon. And then back here, that is the uh, cultist champion fighting that tactical marine and almost got a wound on him. That would have been a moral victory. So this tactical marine is going to charge your guy with the brutal assault weapon. Okay. 
Or actually, I'm going to charge this guy. Charge the guy with the auto gun? With okay. the auto gun, because I have right. a better chance against him. Right. The guy with the auto gun does not get the extra hit in close combat. He's just got a assault rifle. And Nine that definitely makes it. Then you have a sergeant here, right? And my sergeant needs a nine to charge him. Now you get to reroll your charges because of your righteous zeal. Okay, we will charge. No, Four. but we will charge again. Righteous zeal. Five. Yeah. So you can do nothing. Yeah. Or you can move up to five as long as you're moving closer to the person you were trying to charge. As I understand it. So I don't get to shoot, right? No. Okay. Alrighty. Alright. Well, it was a valiant effort, but you didn't quite make it. Okay, so now I get to move all my guys, right? Now you get to move all your guys. So this Chaos Cultist is um, shaken, so he can't do anything. This other one is going to charge your sergeant, I think. Mm hmm I kind of figured. We will attempt to charge. That's a nine. That should be plenty. Yeah. yeah. So he went roaring in. Okay, I think um, next the commissar is going to charge into this combat. Because in for a penny, in for a pound. Seven should be plenty. So he's going to get right in there. This cultist with the flamethrower is going to come up from behind the garbage shaft and move out into the open. The heavy stubber right here is going to ready. This cultist here is going to charge. I think he's going to try to charge the heavy bolter there. So it's going to be a long charge. Somewhere in the eight or nine range, we'll micro measure it if it comes up. 10. Now, you do get overwatch. Actually, you should have overwatched before I did that, but uh, you get three shots because you're shooting with the heavy bolter. Okay. You need a six plus. One hit on overwatch. Okay. Three so, plus to wound. Three plus to wound. And you wounded him. Six up save. Whoops. One. It was meant to be. All right, roll your flesh wound versus elimination. All right, so he's out of commission. He thought he was going to make it, but he didn't. Yeah. So his buddy there can't do anything. This guy here. So this cultist here with the auto pistol and the brutal assault weapon is going to move right about here. I have a cultist up here on top of the wall who's still there, and he's going to ready himself for future combat. And is that everyone? That is everyone. Okay, so now we are in the shooting phase, and you have initiative, so you get to shoot first. So the heavy bolter is going to shoot at your cultist that's up on oh. top, your readied cultist. So the heavy bolter here is going to shoot way up here and try to knock this cultist off the wall where he's been perched. Okay. Two hits. Two hits. Three up to wound. One wound. Six up save. Six, he saved. Wow. He heard the legend of King Rat and he got inspired. Okay, your turn. So the heavy stubber is going to shoot over here, over his own friend, and through the crates and over the barrier to try to hit that uh, heavy bolter guy. So he gets three shots, uh, four plus, five plus. He didn't move, so it's just a five plus. One hit. Heavy Stubber has a strength of four versus your toughness of four, so four up to wound. Oh, gosh. I'm going to re-roll that. I'm going to use a command point and re-roll that. Okay. Well, it was meant to be. Okay, so I'm going to take my Tactical Marine... Can you check and see if I can see your guy over there? Tactical Marine is shooting at right, this guy? Chaos Cultus, yes. I would say it's a pretty decent shot. Okay. 
actually. Okay, tactical marine just uh, holding his position and unleashing fire on this uh, cultist over here. So three up. No. No. Oh. Now you can do your regular shots. Okay. And let's not forget, the people with the pistols can fire their pistols if they're in close combat. So this Chaos Cultist here with an auto pistol is going to shoot this Black Templar here who's rocking the uh, Heavy Volter. So one auto pistol shot. So you get cover, so it's a 5 plus, and he hits. Take him out. 5 up to wound. 3. Oh, should we roll that again? No, I'm going to save it for a special occasion. So you have a sergeant with a pistol who can shoot... This cult is charged, the commissar charged, so they can't use their pistols. So I guess just the one pistol shot from the sergeant. Okay. Three plus. Hits. Three plus. No. Does not wound unless you want to use your command point to reroll it. No. Okay. And so that is, um, I think, all of the shooting. This flamethrower guy uh, hasn't shot yet, but he doesn't really have a good target. So. Okay. Close combat. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have some charges, and it was your um, initiative, so your charges go before mine. So, so tactical marine, that's the only charge I have, right. is going into your cultist. regular cultist. Regular cultist. So three up to hit. One. No. No. Okay. Okay, we'll start with the renegade commissar who charged into your tactical marine. He gets three attacks with his power sword. Three attacks, weapon skill, three plus. Two hits. But he has a uh, strength of three versus your toughness of four, so five up to actually wound. One wound. And it's AP minus three. So you need a six up save. Oh, you got it. <laughs> well, that's pretty special. Were you sweating there for a second? I was. Okay, so this cultist here, also charged. So he gets uh, two attacks because of his brutal assault weapon. Four plus. One. And five up to wound. No. Okay. People who can still fight in close combat are your sergeant, the um, chaos champion, this tactical marine, and this cultist. Right. Okay. So I am going to attack with my tactical marine into right. your champion. All right. Three up to hit. Two does not hit. Okay. So Egon, the cultist champion, has a weapon skill of four plus. He gets two attacks, even though he doesn't have a brutal assault weapon. Two hits. So, strength of three versus your toughness of four. Five up to wound. Two wounds. Three up saves. Missed one, but you have a command point. You can reroll it. If you wish. Got it. Okay. So he saved. Last command point spent. All right. Okay, so then I can attack yeah, with so my sergeant. Sergeant York is attacking the uh, cultist. He there. gets two attacks. Plus a chainsword for three attacks. Three attacks, three up. Two, two hits. hits. Three up, two, two wound. wound. One, One wound. wound. Six up save. No. So roll the injury roll. Out of commission. Goodbye, Mr. Purple Man. You did your best. It is a brutal round of close combat here. So this cultist is going to use his rifle butt and bonk, bonk that tactical marine on the head. So just one attack. Four plus to hit. So he got it. Strength of a three versus your toughness of four. So five up to wound. Wounded. Three up save. Come on. Ah, you got it. That marine armor is always getting in the way. I think that's it. Okay. Now you got it. Now the shakens go away. You got to roll for shaken again. Right. So according to our house rules, this guy's got leadership of five. Um, he has a penalty of one because he's wounded, but he's within sight of the commissar who has a leadership of eight. So eight minus one would be seven. So seven or less. 
And um, he didn't do it, so he's shaking. Even though he sees the commissar, he's just too, too darn nervous. This cultist here does not get the friendly commissar bonus, so he has to roll four or less. Leadership of five minus one because he's wounded, and he doesn't, so he's still shaking. Well, you'd be shaking too if all this was going on around you. So um, that is that. So we'll go into turn four, which is officially our last turn. So we'll see if anything gets resolved here. Roll for initiative. Roll for some initiative. Who wants initiative? Seven, eight. eight. It's right. the Templars have initiative. Okay. The tactical sergeant is going to charge right into your commissar. All right. Okay, that's a charge roll of seven, so more than enough. And who else is doing what? You got oh, you got two Marines on the other side that are not currently engaged. Yeah. So your tactical Marine gunner and your regular tactical Marine are still holding positions over here. What are they going to do? They are both kind of ready. Ready. They kind of like their spots. Okay. Great. So that is all my guys because he's going to stay in combat. All right. Okay. The uh, cultist up here on the wall, he's going to ready himself. The heavy stubber is also going to ready himself. This cultist is going to charge. That's going to give you some overwatch. It is. I'm going to overwatch you. With the heavy bolter. One hit. Three up to wound. And you wound. I get a six up save. Which I don't make. Flesh wound. Okay. So he's wounded. But he can still charge. But he can still charge. Five. He should make it. That should be fine. Now over here, on the other side of the garbage chute, uh, the other half of my cultists seem to be tied up in a big brawl. Uh, that flamer guy there, who's not being employed to full effect, he is going to actually advance... So oh, nine. I'd really, really like to napalm somebody. So we're going to take the flamethrower guy the long way around the garbage chute and look for a target. So at the eight inch flamethrower range, I'm almost able to hit that tactical Marine on the other side of the pylon, but uh, not quite. Everyone moved. Everybody moved. Who's shooting? Um, I only have one readied guy. Okay, you have one readied Marine and that's this tactical Marine. And I think you gave me a clear shot to your flamer. Yep, you can shoot the guy's propane tanks now. So my tactical marine is shooting your cultus flamer. Three up, two hits. Two hits, three, three up, up to wound. No wounds, unless you wish to re-roll one using your No, your sir, I do not. Okay. So the heavy stubber here probably can't shoot into that combat, and he can't quite see the guy behind the Ark of Triumph. This uh, auto gun guy, though, up here can definitely shoot him. Not quite rapid fire range, though, unfortunately. So one shot. Five up to hit. Hits. A wound of um, five up. No. I will spend a command point and re-roll that. No. <laughs> okay. Okay, so time for some pistols. So you have the sergeant, and I have the commissar. And is that it? So the sergeant has a pistol, but he charged, so he can't do that right now. But the um, uh, commissar can definitely use his plasma pistol. So the commissar gets one pistol shot. His uh, ballistic skill is three plus. So one hit with a plasma pistol. So three plus to wound. Six, it wounds. Minus three AP, so you need a six or better to save. Five. Now you could re-roll that with your command point. No. Wounded. Flesh wound. So, flesh wound on the sergeant. Too bad. That could have been more fun than that. Okay. Now charges. So you're charging the commissar with the sergeant. Mm-hmm. He gets three attacks. Three attacks three with up. the chainsword. And unfortunately, no hits. So on the other side of the board, I have the cultist who's charging in. He has a brutal assault weapon, but he's also flesh wounded. So he gets two attacks. Normally he would need a four plus. Now he needs a five plus. 
one hit, five up to wound. No, I guess I could use a point. I'll give him one more chance. No. <laughs> All right, so we got some more close combat. So the sergeant attacked. The commissar shot his plasma pistol, but he can still fight. And then you have your tactical marine, and then this guy here, this regular cultist. And then over here, we have a fight between... Over here, there's a fight between the tactical marine and the uh, cultist champion. Okay, so who's doing what? So the tactical marine's going to attack your commissar. All right. Three plus. No. Okay. They are not doing well today. <laughs> so the commissar is attacking the sergeant. Three attacks with the power sword. One hit. Strength of three versus your toughness of four, so five up to wound. And didn't do it. Okay. So tactical marine fighting the chaos cultist champion. Three up. Got him. Three up. No. Okay. Then let's see who's left. The champion is left, and then this cultist here with his. And mine over there. And mine over there. Okay. So the champion is going to attack the uh, tactical marine. Two attacks. Uh, no hits. Okay. So tactical marine attacking this cultist on the wall. So three up. Got him. Hit. Three up. Wound. Got him. And then... Um, save. Yeah. Six up save. Didn't do it. So you roll a wound roll and you add one because he's already got a flesh wound. So three. three. That's another flesh wound. But he'll probably fail his um, morale. So the last guy I have who can do close combat is this uh, cultist over here with his auto gun. And he's going to uh, try to attack this little tactical marine. And um, one attack. And I guess he needs a four plus. Got it. Five up to wound. Oh, no. And that is that. Yeah, now morale phase, I'll do it quickly. So I have one guy here. He can see the commissar, but he's got a wound, so he needs a seven or better. Seven or less. And no, so he is... Um, still shaken. Still shaken. Then I have a cultist here who's got a flesh wound, and uh, he needs um, four or less. And no. And then finally, I have this uh, chaos cultist up here on the wall. He has two wounds, five leadership, so he needs a three or less. And <laughs> no, so he's shaken. And then my leader's got a roll. He needs a, he normally needs an eight, but he's wounded, so he needs a seven or less. And he does. Seven. So that is our so fourth round. That is the fourth round. And it looks like we have a stalemate. We could keep going, but... Uh, we're into this for about two hours now, and that's pretty long for a game that's supposed to be 30 to 45 minutes. So, um, yeah, it looks like everybody's in the middle. I've taken three casualties. I have a bunch of guys who are wounded. And shaken. And shaken. I bet you the Commissar could eventually do some damage over there. The Commissar will eventually do damage. But uh, you have one wounded Marine. Yeah. Over here, we do have the heavy weapons coming in, but um, who's to say if they won't get shot to pieces though you are in close combat here, so you can't necessarily unleash the heavy bolter on them. Okay, well, we're going to call it a draw. We could keep grinding away, but, uh, you it know. It could go either way at this point. could go either way. Basically, sometimes the game just comes down to dice a rolls. lot of dice rolling. So just who gets the higher dice rolls when they need them. So uh, we're going to say that these guys clashed. Then there was uh, some sort of a power spike. Maybe the Chaos Gods intervened, or maybe the Inquisition was battling up on the... Uh, street level and the power went out and in the confusion and the darkness the two sides stumbled away and disengaged so commissar jaeger did not quite make it to freedom but he has most of his minions still alive at least for the moment so maybe there'll be a rematch at some point and uh the templars are now out for blood because they uh yeah they could see victory it was in their grasp and they couldn't quite pull it off well lynn do you have uh Newfound respect for the Space Marine armor. It saved your bacon more than once. And the command points did, too. And the command points. Judicious use of command points. Don't waste them on attacks. Save them for saving your skin. Right. Okay, well, that is our second on-screen game of Warhammer 40,000 Kill Team. And since it was indecisive, since there was no clear victory on either side, 
perhaps the Templars and Meister Jaeger will meet again at a future time and place. But in the meantime, as always, thank you very much for watching. If you like the things we do here, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please give this video a big thumbs up. And of course, please visit us online at our website, skirmishwargames.com.